Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back for another brand new video and there it is, ladies and gentlemen, we've all been waiting on the answer since Michael Beale was sacked, who would be the next man, who would be the man tasked with taking the mess, and trust me, the mess that we're in right now, grinding that down, trying to pick up players, trying to get a tune for a guy that wouldn't be trusted at band camp to figure out how to turn this team into winners, and to eventually, hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, champions and silverware merchant. We've all been waiting, we've read about it, we've discussed it, we've debated it, we've had to listen to nonsense and made up drivel for people profiting for stuff that doesn't even make sense. Well, now we know the truth. Phil Clement is here. And I, troops, we're going to throw the arms out and welcome the big laddie, but it's a welcoming hug that we whisper, good luck in to his ear because the task again that's ahead of him. Now, I'm going to be honest with you ladies and gentlemen, you might be think, sitting there thinking to yourself, CJ, you've just talked about Big Phil just two days ago in a 22, 23 minute video. How on earth are you going to make this entertaining for every single person watching? <laughs> I don't know. Nah, it's fine, Troops. I'll just throw the notes away that I took doing about Phil Clement over the space of a couple of weeks to try and give you his mere I'll just start again. You know what I mean? It's fine, Troops. I'm absolutely all right with that. But honestly, all joking and that aside, I think you can speak about a manager and you can look at a manager and you can look at a player as well and look at what they've done in the past when that area, a rumour or a potential is on the cards. And then when he's actually announced, it is a completely different conversation. So it is going to be a different video. We're not going to go through the exact same stuff. We're not going to look at his managerial journey. If you want that, check the last video. We're actually here to talk about what this man can do for our club, what he can do right away, and a couple tunes that he needs to get out of a couple players and how I feel like it's going to translate or transfer over and hopefully change this Rangers team, especially when it comes to a couple key individuals who I think this is a massive appointment for. But before we do go ahead and dive into the Rangers conversation, speak about a couple light switches in terms of Rangers careers I'm expecting to flip and start getting a little bit brighter. Let's just talk about the actual man himself and the announcement. Am I shocked? Am I surprised? Am I absolutely buzzing that Clement is the next Rangers manager? Well, no, certainly no. And maybe no up there as well. And that's nothing against him, by the way. I'm not saying that I'm not excited about this one or happy about this one because it's anything against him. No, there's two reasons why I'm not overly backflipping right now in the channel. One, usually when I get overly excited about something, it goes completely wrong. So I'm doing this for you, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Accept that, Phil. I'd be happy about that, Phil. And two, Troops, it's followed the way that I expected it to go right from day one, right, what we've spoken about right here on the channel. You think about it, after Michael Beale got sacked, there was so much hysteria, there was so much clickbait nonsense that's out there, and we never discussed any of it right here on the channel, because I didn't want to make money or profit from stuff that I knew was nonsense. You know I mean, I really value the people's times who tune in to this video, so I try and only bring you the real stuff that we need to speak about, and speak about, sorry, and we spoke about them right here on the channel, the three managers that actually spoke to Rangers. No, this name, this name, nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. The three names, and we built it the way up, the way we did. Lampard to Musket to Clement for a reason, and that's the reason that I said in the Clement video, that is the guy that I believe Rangers wanted and were trying to go out to get, and that's exactly the way that it's actually unfolded, so I am happy with the announcement, trust me, I am, and I think he is going to change things for the better, and that's where we're going to go right now in the video, but in case you're wondering why I'm not doing backflips, or it's just not been a surprise to me, I'm excited that the man is here, but I know what a job this guy's actually got with a couple of these players that's on the decline, players that's completely lost their confidence. This is a huge job for this laddie and I'm absolutely praying I works out because if this laddie's a successful Rangers manager, that means we've been a successful team and we get to be very happy and that would be nice to have on the channel. Regarding the man himself, full credit to him, he showed what he's about because he's had two offers for Saudi, two of them. Ladies and gentlemen, and it doesn't matter the sound bites you see about, oh, I've always wanted to play in the Saudi League, oh, it's a great place for football, it's this, it's this and this. We all know why people's gone over there, and Clement's had two offers to go over there, and has rejected the money because he's been waiting for the right project and the right club, or the right challenge, I should say. And I think every single person who's tuning into the videos hearing the words challenge and project and knows that's exactly 
what we are. So I rate his cojones, it could have been easy to go there and make some money in the Saudi league, but he wanted the task, he wanted the right job, and let's hope this is the one to get him back in the managerial favour as well, and turn us into what we should be, and that's a team that's capable of winning games of football and not hanging on for dear life versus the dross in the SPF. L. But let's get into that. What's he going to change then now that he is as the manager? Again, right away, it is going to be that te the, the tactical flexibility. That's where we need to go. That's what we need to discuss. And again, I'm not going to copy the same stuff we've already spoken about. But now we are no, we are finally freed of the shackles of the floor. Free, free. We're finally going to see a manager troops that looks at everyone. He's going to come in the door. He's going to look at everyone we've got at this football club who's not injured. There's not too many of them. But he's going to look at them and say, right, how do I get the best out of this guy and this guy and this guy? And this might seem like such a painfully obvious thing, but any true Rangers fan who's watched these games and watched this team knows what I'm about to say. Wisney actually happening. We now have a manager who's going to play a formation and a style that's going to get the best at the players that's absolutely there, rather than grabbing players and grabbing players, chucking them there, chucking them there to play the style that they want to play, know what the players are good at or what they are, we're actually going to have a manager that's going to play players in the right position and play to their strengths, it's something we've not seen now for far, far too long, and again, I went, I'm not saying we're going to abandon the 4-3 and we'll never see it, we'll probably will still see it ladies and gentlemen, but we want to see people getting abandoned in the middle of the park, getting co uh, covered onto the right, being played out of position, and that to me is the answer to the question that you're going to have in the comment section, well what can we expect to change? so quickly under Claymont's reign. That right there is the change, Trips. We had a manager who used to play players to get the best out of his formation and his tactics. Well, now we actually have a manager, Trips, who's going to play a formation to get the best out of his players. It sounds so simple and obvious, but we have been robbed of that for far, far too long. And it wasn't just a Beal problem. It was beyond that. It was a Geo problem. It was a Steven Gerrard problem. This 4-3-3 free, free, forcing players out of position, we have seen it for far, far too long. And that's why I think I'm so excited about being free of that. The likes of Joe Rebo wasted the right wing. The Hadjis, the Kemar Roos. We played the four there. We played Cedric in, who can't stop scoring goals for young boys, people. Scoring goals in European football every time a ball comes into the air. Do you know why? Because he's a six foot three centre forward troops no, a right winger, we've seen it far, far too long and now that's been ripped away and we have a manager who again will identify what we've got and build his formation from there is such a relief right in this heart. Again, just to say it because I do expect to see the 4 for 3 again on certain occasions, I'm not saying we're never going to see the formation again, but I'll tell you what we will only see, troops. Jose Cervantes playing right mid at the per points to babysit Tavani with Raskin getting left on his end and Lundstrom sitting into a back four that's already there. Troops, we won't see that anymore. We'll actually see players given an opportunity to do what they do. And speaking of the individual players, there's always going to be a managerial bounce. That's just the way football actually works. But I like the fact that everyone's getting a clean slate and everyone's going to get an opportunity to build upwards with the actual manager. I know a lot of people was excited about the potential either like the Sam Lammers and that. I know he's a bit of a fan favourite with a couple of people. But even to the lesser extent, the likes of Dessers, for instance, trips, which I know that no one likes right now, and I can't argue against it. He has been dreadful so far this season. But I'll tell you one thing we will see under uh, with Dessers under Clement. We won't see him just be punted long balls to run in behind because I've said it even in the rumour video. This man's as slow as a weekend in the cells and we had him leading the line punting long balls to him to chase. That man's got knee conference at all. Nay belief because it's been ripped out of him playing completely against his style and against his grain. He's never been a running behind type striker. He needs somebody off him to play off him. And I think that is son because like it or no, we spent money on Dessers. He's got a long contract. He is there and he is fit so he will be getting played. But what I'm excited about Troops is the fact that I think Clement will put somebody beside him. Well, there is a 4-4-2. Clement's played a 4-4-2 many times or managed, I should say, in his career, the 4-4-2. And it might be that or it might just be actually playing to the big man still instead of having lump ball after lump ball after lump ball to a guy that can't run maybe use him as the shield play off him because he's got a couple decent passes look at, look at the assist that he's got have people actually near him it's so simple just never saw 
any of it for so long, which is why we were all absolutely miffed. And it's not just maybe the more controversial ones. It's like, say, Todd Cantwell, when that laddie comes back, what he was last season to what he's been this season, because Beal again got all the toys that he wanted, but never knew how to play with them and played them where the place. I don't know what Cantwell's position was. It's certainly when it was the last season when he was impacting games and running games. For Rangers, he'll be a focal point of this Rangers team under Claremont. I'm nearly absolutely 100% confident in him being a mainstay and being a focal point and being played in his best position. No sacrifice is almost a six to let strikers play on the wing. Do you know what I mean? So I, the Cantwells, the Dessers, the Lammers, I, I get, or that the Jose's as well, I'm sure, will actually be played. But there's one name that I want to talk about and one guy that I need to talk about, Troops, because I know everyone gets mad when you criticise him because he is the fan favourite, but Raskin has been a shadow of himself this season. And the reason I call him out, yes, I know he won man of the match in his last game and everything like that, but he hasn't been anything like what he should be. And that's because I rate this lad right up to here. He's been playing about here, which might be all right to skate through games around, but no for me, no one I can, the lads, got the quality. He should be running games. He should be in the big games versus Celtic, the main man in a Rangers team. But he's no been that and he's looked unhappy, he's looked unsettled, he's looked like he doesn't even know what's been asked to him and a lot of that has been down to this formation because uh, tell me in the comment section if this is familiar. We've got a midfield three, right? Just say Lunny and let's say Jose and uh, Raskin beside him, right? What happens is Lunny drops back into the defensive line to go and get the ball, leaving Raskin with Jose and then Jose needs to babysit Tavernier who's went forward so Jose goes there here and then what happens to David Raskin? He's on his end completely. One switch for the opposition and Raskin has two, sometimes three men on him and he's been getting ran all over. That should never be happening. The Rangers team's got to be built in a spine and we've never had one for a long, long time. Raskin can be that spine if you put bodies actually near him. No asking Lonnie to go back here and do this and Jose to go here and babysit this. Let's have a midfield free being a midfield free if that's the formation that we're actually going to be playing. I'm very excited to see maybe the rebuff Air Rask is enough, as I'm sure Clement will look at him and say he should be a focal point in our team rather than an afterthought and a 4 3 3. I don't have a clue if I'm making any sense right now, Trips, but that is what I'm looking forward to seeing. All these wee holes and all this stuff that we've been able to see for the silence since pre season that's been all over the place should be covered up now. Am I saying it's going to be magnificent and perfect? And oh my god, we're going to be slapping teams every single week right away. I'm not necessarily saying that, ladies and gentlemen, but I am saying I think you can be confident in Clement being a tactically adept manager to look at what he's got and get the actual best there, whether it is established players or younger players and that as well. And that's something we'll touch on. Again, this is an appointment that's no worrying to me if you're a Bailey Rice or a Zach Lovelace or a Leon King, for instance. This is not a worry to me that this manager... It might have been if we are appointing Musket because, again, we are, I did like his breathless pace, 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 tempo. And I wanted to see that. There was a part of me that really wanted to see that style of play up here because we know it can be a success and Clement's not got that breathless style of football but Kev's not exactly been the best way of bleeding in young players and giving young players an opportunity. I think Clement bridges the gap almost perfectly. What we want as fans and what we need as a football club and that's a door actually being open for younger talents whether that be Alex Lowry when he eventually comes back to this football club or no there needs to be a door open and Clement is a man manager that gives everyone an opportunity. He's no the, the, the drill sergeant that people's expecting him or talking out their arse and saying on social media is because he's got a big bald head and a bit of a stare. Actually, read any people that's worked with the laddie. He goes about his business. He likes to know every detail of the players. He does try to build that connection. He will back you to the hilt, whether it's in the press or on the park or anything like that. But if you lose that trust, if you start uh, misperforming, then he'll drop the players. Then it'll take you, and again, troops, guess what? If you work hard in training, you get an opportunity on the park, and guess what? See, if you play well on the park, you get to play next week. It's all mad stuff, this, ladies and gentlemen, but it's what a manager should actually be. You shouldn't be playing week in and week out, even if you're playing dross, and Clement will bring that responsibility and bring that discipline that's been badly lacking in a Rangers team for far, far 
too long and that's the keys that's what I can expect to change again he's not a checkbook manager we didn't need to wait to the summer to get his end players and he's never been that manager anyone wanting this guy sold this guy this guy and bringing on all new bodies to the Belgian league and blah 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 he's going to do this he's never been that you know what I mean he's no really interested in agents or anything like that he lets his sporting directors the directors of football bring names to him then he'll look and say aye or no he likes to work with what's in the building and gives everyone an opportunity and that is something I can get behind especially in the short term it takes us through a very tricky winter period into January whether well, a couple people move on or no that is what we can expect to change troops tactical flexibility and playing to play our strengths and that's truthfully it troops again I can't guarantee it's going to be a success but if you look at all the candidates if you look at all the stuff on paper have we picked maybe the best candidate for the job that we need done at the football club, aye, and for once, we've not just went, is he a Rangers man? Is he walked by the stadium once? We need somebody that knows the club. No, we need a manager that's got a style and a philosophy of football. That's what we need, and that's new what we've actually got, and aye, hopefully it be a success, and hopefully that brings success to this football club. That would be very nice, but what about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you mad? Or are you glad? Let me know down there, and let me know how you feel about the new Rangers manager. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you've enjoyed the little managerial merry-go-round, if you will. Again, I've not talked about this name or this name or this name that maybe other people have, but that's been nonsense, troops, and I don't like taking your hangy for granted, you know what I mean, I'm not just going to fire out videos or fire out content because I feel like I need to upload, not I'll bring you stuff that I genuinely believe is true and that's what we've looked at, so aye, hopefully you've enjoyed the coverage and everything like that and until next time, I've been CJ92, thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.